One, two, three, four, five. Fish all day and make up lies. Welcome to Tight Lines with Michael Marinelli and Phil Stanley. Here I am in the South of Bright. Hello and welcome to, my to another ways. edition of Tight Lines, the Florida Keys Fishing Show. Nice. I'm Michael Marinelli of American Caribbean Real Estate here in Isla Mirada in the fabulous Florida Keys. And I'm joined by my co-host, Mr. Phil Stanley. Thank you. How are you guys doing? Uh, then you are with Bass World Pro Shops. Yeah. Worldwide Bass Sportsman. Or Worldwide Sportsman, as Absolutely. we call it here. And mm-hmm. you're the event coordinator. That's right. Run all the seminars, tournaments, everything that goes on there. Goes through me. Awesome, awesome. Well, if you've tuned in before, you know we like to have a lot of fun here. We are what I call the fishing show for the average Joe. And we've got a lot of stuff that's going to be coming up uh, today. We're going to talk about kind of how you get started fishing here in the Florida Keys. And over the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some great captains coming in. So we've got a lot of great stuff on tap. Uh, it's been a whirlwind of fishing activity lately here in the Keys oh, yeah. that we're going to talk about in the next segment. Uh, everything from patch reefs to the backcountry to uh, I went out fishing with my wife this last weekend. We had a great time. I got really pissed off because I got a great mutton snapper on my line. And 10 friggin' feet from the boat, Mr. Taxman came and bit it in half. It's and I think Harry's going to put a picture of it uh, <laughs> that, that we had here, a legal size mutton, and let's just say I was not a happy camper, but at least my uh, on sh- offshore taxes have been paid. That's so uh, Still going to pay more this year. I oh, I, I have that. no, I have that, no yeah. doubt I am going to pay a lot, and that's mm-hmm. uh, actually not a bad thing. That means you're out on the water fishing, and a bad day of fishing in the Florida Keys, I think Pete's just about a good Anything, day anywhere yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. Especially yeah. if you are listening to us and you experienced that terrible winter that folks had up north. Uh, let me tell you, you need to be down here in the Florida Keys, as I mentioned. I'm with American Caribbean Real Estate. I sell waterfront homes. It's a privilege to be able to help people turn their island dreams into their new tropical oasis. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. that's that's what it's all about. And uh, we love having some fun. And, uh, you know, we're broadcasting here from Heartbreakers, which is the Heartbreakers Brew House here in Isla Mirada, mile marker 81, that has phenomenal music. If you've ever been to, like, a, a San Francisco coffee house oh, yeah. or something. I lived in San Francisco. Yeah, exactly. Big yeah, poetry yeah, 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 and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Got it all. That's what this vibe is here, man. It's, mm-hmm. and it's, it's a brew house instead of coffee house. And we have great music. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, oh, you did I a, was there. I you, you yeah. did one of the uh, A1A, and if you haven't listened or watched also on video, we do the A1A sessions uh, here broadcast live, live from the uh, stage here, great stage that we have set up here at Heartbreakers. Mm-hmm. So yeah. stay tuned. We're going to be right back and talking all kinds of great stuff here in the Florida Keys at Tight Lines, the Florida Keys Fishing Show. This is Michael Marinelli from American Caribbean Real Estate, and today I'm coming to you from Marine Thrift in Key Largo. You are basically one-stop shop for everything that you need, last-minute vests, uh, fishing poles, rods, reels, snorkels, uh, fins, whatever you need, they've got it. Gently seasoned uh, items that you can buy secondhand that are at great, great prices. So instead of maybe going to one of the big stores and dropping a ton of cash, why don't you check out my friends uh, Carolyn and Justin here. They can hook you up with whatever you need. Let me take you inside. This is Michael Marinelli of American Caribbean Real Estate with your Real Estate Conk featured property. Today, spotlighting 125 Venetian Drive in Isla Mirada. Here, you can enjoy the phenomenal Isla Mirada lifestyle in this just-built waterfront home. Everything's new. Three bedrooms upstairs and a separate guest suite downstairs. Exceptional features include stunning granite kitchen, veranda, sumptuous master bath, and a homeowner's park with its rare sandy beach. This is your bucket list opportunity. For more information on this home and other power buys, contact me at 305 305- 439-7730 and visit my award-winning Florida Keys lifestyle blog at therealestatecomp.com. Welcome back to Tight Lines with Michael Marinelli and 
Phil Stanley. Hey there, and welcome back to Tight Lines, the Florida Keys fishing show. Man, we have so much fun on the tables, the off the break as we do here mm-hmm. uh, in front of the camera. But um, hey, Phil, tell me what's going on uh, right now, fishing report wise here in the Florida Keys. We've had some amazing weather and some interesting tides. It's been well, yeah, well, strong tides, um, but that's okay. That's what you want. Uh, weather's been brilliant. You know, not yep. to rub it in the faces of everyone else in the rest of the country. Yes, but we yeah, do. It, yes, we it's do. It's been great. It's been great. <laughs> um, but that's the island life here. Yeah. No, everything's been great. The, what we haven't seen, we haven't seen the mahi that we wanted right. to. And we're hoping that's going to come in with the May moon. Um, usually around April, you're going to start seeing the schools of keepers and stuff like that coming through. Sure. I know some people in some of the tournaments that we had uh, got into some big bulls, but... right. They won't tell you when or where. No, of course. Know? That's um, a, a trade secret. Yeah, but but um, everything, th- yeah, everything else has been sort of schooly so far. So okay. we're crossing our fingers. We're hoping we're going to see that later May into early June. Um, everything else has been pretty much on fire. It's tarpon season, as you well know, and we are in the thick of it. Let me backtrack for a second. For folks Go who for aren't familiar in Florida Keys, and when we're talking dolphin, and no, we are not talking about eating flipper. No. We are talking about the fish with three names, That's right. which is Mahi. dolphin. Mahi and Dorado, depending right. on where you're at, mm-hmm. that's what we call it. And we have a couple categories and sizes. You mentioned schoolie. Tell me about the different sizes that people uh, refer to when you're looking at dolphin. Um, well, essentially, you're going to be looking at schoolies, which are going to be our undersized ones, um, usually a sort of a fluctuating number and all that. Um, then you have ones that are keepers, and then bulls are going to be your 50-pounders up right. that big and all that. That's what you're going after right there. That's the ultimate fight. They're probably the most beautiful fish that swims. Oh, it's they're like amazing. Butterflies. Um, they are amazing. Yeah, and they're great to eat, too. Uh, but so. I think they're the de facto fish that we have here yeah, in the yeah. Florida Keys. Mm-hmm. When you're going to come to just about any restaurant, their special of the day is you, or any fish that you're probably going to be eating is going to be dolphin unless mm-hmm. you want to order something else yeah. like hogfish or grouper yeah, yeah. or hogfish what have you. And hey, speaking of grouper. It's grouper season, It's folks. grouper yeah, season. My, and, uh, my favorite fish to both catch and eat. And uh, my wife and I went out this uh, weekend. Uh, it was a little bit, it wasn't so much choppy, but it was a lot of swells uh-huh. off a of long key where we went fishing. So it's what I call Hemingway days. There you go. We're in our boat. We're you know, going yeah. up and down. And I give my wife credit. She normally doesn't like to go out that far. But we went to the edge of the reef because uh-huh. she was hungry to catch her first of the season um, grouper. And, and she? she absolutely there did. She go. got a beautiful red. I think we'll have a picture of that coming up. Cool. Uh, just legal, 20 inches, mm-hmm. which is for our red groupers is 20. The other groupers are generally 22, if I recall. Is it 22 or 24? I've got to mm-hmm. double check. Yeah. But we also caught um, a Warsaw, uh, not a Warsaw, but a Nassau grouper, okay. which unfortunately those are not legal to keep. They're part of the endangered groupers like the Goliath, although mm-hmm. I'll tell you a lot of guys will tell me those Goliaths aren't as endangered as they used to well, be. They I become mean, a nuisance. That's, what, you know, that's it. They're kind of a, according to the captains, they're a nuisance fish because they're protected. They'll eat literally anything that you catch. So right. just like the tax man there, I mean, very much, yeah, because it's another type of tax man. Now, granted, the fight is insane. Those things uh, get the size of a VW beetle. Yeah, they're, 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 imagine having a VW beetle on the end of your line yeah. who's really grumpy. Yeah, angry and pulling. And yeah. uh, But but it's fun, and, and they're beautiful, and they're, they're wonderful fish. And, and, you know, who knows what's going to happen with them. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, otherwise, I mean, we've started, you know, we have the, the wonderful football-sized tuna, you know, out there mm. on the humps. I uh, um, love those. Yeah, it's great. Mutton snapper fishing has been on fire. I mean, I've seen pictures of just hogs being brought yes. in. Big, big boys. Oh, yeah. Big boys. Yeah, it's been, it's been really nice. I mean, yellowtail are there. Uh, tilefish. Yeah, that's another right one now. you were saying. Uh-huh. Uh, people yeah. are doing really well with tile, tile fish. fish. If you've never had tile fish, it is delicious. Yeah, and, and they're beautiful fish, yeah, too. They it's sure are. Nothing that looks like them. I mean, just crazy looking. And uh, Swordfish Ledge has been going really good. Backcountry has been insane. Like I said, it's tarpon season. Yeah. That's what most people are coming down here for right now. Um, and it's delivered. Uh, most of the captains are bringing in. You know, I've had... I think with nine jumps, two boated wow. you know, two That's days a, ago. I um, was out fishing the, the day I was, I was catching my... Um, Mutton that I'm still pissed uh-huh. off about, yeah, but uh, you know, uh, it, it's kind of funny. It's kind of an isolated spot where I normally go, but yet yeah, I saw there were about four different uh, charter guys out there fishing for for tarpon. Yeah, and the tarpon were jumping out of the air, and it was awesome. I mean, you talk talk a beautiful sight. Oh yeah, is yeah. When you see these guys on the flats and you see this huge tarpon jumping out of the air, it is something uh, really it's remarkable. It's like a nature documentary or something. Yeah. you know, some sort of you know, but but it, it, it it's brilliant. Um, they've been doing very well with them. I mean, like I said, um, you know, it, it, it's sort of a daily success rate. The snook fishing in the backcountry up around Flamingo has been awesome. Um, 
I personally can attest to that. Yeah. Uh, even tarpon back there, I ran into some of them. A lot of fun. Red fishing, meh, not so much. For right. the past couple weeks, uh, trout bite was really, really good. Of course, they're bringing in big mangroves from the mangroves. Right. Um, and bone fishing. Uh, I haven't seen How's any pictures. Been? I haven't seen any big ones yet, but, okay. but a very high success rate and all that. And then flats permit. Um, People get on them not as much at the braggadocias. I usually see. I know the wreck sure. permit fishing has been insane right yeah, now. Yeah, that, that um, they've been doing really well. How uh-huh. are the fly guys doing? Uh, I bet they're enjoying this wind being down. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's for sure. Uh-huh. But, but yeah, it, they're, they're doing great out on, you know, with bones. I mean, with tarpon on the fly right now, it's been insane. Yeah. You know, it's been absolutely insane. You have this big, you know, migratory swell of tarpon coming through. So you have them at the bridges. You have them in the cuts. You have them cruising the flats. You have them right off on the ocean side right. and all that. And if they can stock down a pot of tarpon, you know, on a fly rod, they're on it. I mean, I've seen, you know, check Instagrams for it. You know, yeah. just search well, Florida Keys. I'll tell you a, a great thing fishing. to do is if you've ever wanted to see tarpon firsthand. Uh, we have a place called Robbie's here, uh-huh. which is at mile marker 77 in Isla Mirada, where you can actually feed them by hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's one of the cool, mouth yeah, you buy a bucket uh-huh. of fish and you can actually get there right on the dock and they have some just humongous tarpon. Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's great to do. And what's cool about tarpon is they have some amazing eyesight. Oh, yeah. And when you throw you one of those going. fish, they're tracking that thing from in the water and they can jump up and get it. And it's pretty remarkable uh-huh. when you see that. So yeah. a great place to go which is Robbie's, and we're going to give you a lot of inside tips over the course of our show, where mm-hmm. to go and what to do. Oh, and uh, Again, a great restaurant there, which is the Hungry Tarpon. Uh, there at Robbie's, great place and fun place to go. Aptly named. So, uh, <laughs> there, there you go. Um, what else has happened? Anything on the reefs that you've been hearing? Um, no, that's just going to be, that. that's your grouper game, that's your mutton snapper game. Um, sailfish are still in, yeah. and that's been cool. There's been a lot of bait showers when people are out fishing for other things. Um, Yellowtails are still there, as far as I know. Yeah, um, I did a I did a really good uh, yellowtail bite the other day. Okay, yeah, just and that's it. As my, as a bycatch, uh-huh. actually, well, that's it. You line up that yellow school bus, and you get big, big mangroves out there as well on the reef too. You know, uh, yep. pilchards. You know, uh, cut ballyhoo. Which yep. you'll, you know, it, it'll be money. Uh, barracuda, of course, always there, but. They've been a lot of fun lately, too. So, yeah, uh-huh. yes, people get some big barracuda. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, you know, once again, almost a bycatch. You know, if you're catching sure. anything else, they're going to be coming in looking for an easy meal. So No doubt, uh-huh. no doubt. And, of course, uh, when you're trying to catch shark, I know my buddy Matt Bellinger, they, he just went out and they did a phenomenal shark catch. They yeah, caught yeah. Uh, like five different varieties of shark in one day that they were targeting. And uh, really great. If you've never caught a shark, it's a lot of fun. Sometimes I don't like it because, again, it's that bycatch that yeah, yeah, yeah. you end up getting some bait or they end up getting your fish yeah uh, but they're they're an awesome catch and mm-hmm. uh, a lot of respect to the sharks that are, are out there yeah a lot i mean you know uh, a lot of kids like the sharks i mean mm-hmm. that's it you know it's the name of the game is that it's exciting you know wow a shark sure and in person and and you know they run you get them and just and uh yeah they're fun you know uh not my targeted thing mm-hmm. um Usually more of a nuisance. That's when I bring up half a fish. But yeah, say, say, um, same here. It's a, I usually when I'm fishing, folks, I usually like to fish for stuff that I'm basically going to have on the table. I mean, everybody likes what mm, they like. I'm yeah. not so much of a sport fisherman. See, that's of me. Things I'm, like, I'm the catch and release guy. Yeah, you're so the catch and release. It, yeah, I'm yeah, the catch uh-huh. and cook. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's it. That's, that's it. what it is. And that's one of the cool things about fishing here in the Florida Keys. You have so many different variations of species that we have here, especially in the Middle Keys, which Isla Mirada is known mm-hmm. as the sport fishing capital of the world, you can go out and target a variety of things or just do a, a roulette and see, throw uh, stuff out there and, you know, see what comes up. So Practically anything in Florida that's salt water, yeah. you're going to find you, down here. You got a hook, you got a reel, and, mm-hmm. and speaking of hooks and reels, we're going to talk about that in the next segment. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. What to use to start getting fishing here in the Florida Keys. So mm-hmm. we're going to be right back. Again, thank you for watching Tight Lines, the Florida Keys fishing show, and if you're listening as well, uh, we sure appreciate it and look forward to uh, coming right back to you. Thanks for joining us on Tight Lines with Michael Marinelli and Phil Stanley. Hello, this is Michael Marinelli from American Caribbean Real Estate, and today I'm coming to you from Lean Thrift in Key Largo. Your basically one-stop shop for everything that you need, last minute vests, uh, fishing poles, rods, reels, snorkels, uh, fins, whatever you need, they've got it. Gently seasoned uh, items that you can buy secondhand that are at great, great prices. So instead of maybe going to one of the big stores and dropping a ton of cash, why don't you check out my friends uh, Carolyn and Justin here. They can hook you up with whatever you need. Let me take you inside. Hello, this is...
This is Michael Marinelli of American Caribbean Real Estate with your Real Estate Conk featured property. Today, spotlighting 125 Venetian Drive in Isla Mirada. Here, you can enjoy the phenomenal Isla Mirada lifestyle in this just-built waterfront home. Everything's new. Three bedrooms upstairs and a separate guest suite downstairs. Exceptional features include stunning granite kitchen, veranda, sumptuous master bath, and a homeowner's park with its rare sandy beach. This is your bucket list opportunity. For more information on this home and other power buys, contact me at 305-439-7730 and visit my award-winning Florida Keys lifestyle blog at therealestatecomp.com. Michael Marinelli and Phil Stanley. Hi, folks. Welcome back to Tight Lines, the Florida Keys Fishing Show. I'm Michael Marinelli of American Caribbean Real Estate, and I also am co-host of the Florida Keys Real Estate Guys, also here, here on uh, Radio A1A, and you can also watch on YouTube. That one we broadcast live every Monday at uh, 12 noon. We're almost up to our 100th episode, written very close. We're going to have a big party when we do. Uh, we've done what, about, about 87 uh, episodes or so, so if you never had a chance, go and listen. We have it on a podcast. You can hear it on Stitcher. You can hear it through our custom app. Uh, you can watch this video when it prom- premieres and our real estate show on uh, A1A Media Network on YouTube. So uh, great stuff that are there. But hey, like as I mentioned, uh, we're here at Heartbreakers, and I'm here with my friend Phil Stanley from uh-huh. Worldwide Sportsman. And we're going to talk a little bit now, Phil, about what do you do to get started fishing here, some basic gear. You're coming to the Keys. Mm-hmm. What are the must-haves? Okay, well, the must-haves are going to be... I'd say if you've never really done it before, start with, I'd say, like a, a spinning reel, right? spinning rod. It, it, down here, you have such a variety of fish. I would go with a medium heavy. So that's going to be a 10 to 20 pound yeah. rod. If you're on a boat, hey, if you're not, I, I'd do a seven footer. Mm-hmm. I find it easier if a fish is getting close to you. You can have a more accurate cast, you know, instead right. of having to negotiate that extra foot, if you're, or half a foot if you're a seven, six, or eight foot rod. Um, you know, I would put on, I'm a big braid guy. There's a lot of people that are big mono people. Um, yep. If I'm using braid, I'll average a 15 to 20 pound. That way, it'd still be finesse enough for me to catch smaller fish out on the reef. Right. It's going to be super sensitive. Um, tarpon, you can handle with that, no issue. A lot of the guys will be going up to 30 pound. That way, it's more of a guaranteed sure. landing, and you don't want to stress out those fish. If you're in the back country, 15 to 20 pound is great. If you're going for bonefish, take it down to about a 10 pound braid. Um, and uh, Swivel leaders. Okay, so you're always going to want to have a leader down here. You have a lot of toothy cre- uh, critters. I would, uh, with tarpon, I'll go up to 60. Um, if you're using something that's going to see it, you know, like a, uh, a permit, a bonefish. Mm-hmm. You know, Snappers, they're yeah, great I'll, eyesight. I'll take it down to, you know, even sometimes a 20-pound test. Um, fluorocarbon? Maybe, maybe, yeah, always, I always use fluorocarbon. Right, you that's know, what I use. It, yeah, it's it, it supposedly more... Uh, uh, it's easier. It's more difficult to see in the water. Um, it has less memory, so you get more of a straight line. Like right. It's not that kind of uh, crimped up uh, look to it. Um, and then, you know, the big thing that you're going to want to start with is going to be jig heads. Right. Now, granted, the thing about jig heads is whether you do artificials or you do live bait, a jig head is going to get your bait down to where you want it to be. You have a lot of current down here. So mm-hmm. if you're in backcountry and deep channels underneath mangroves, if you're in the bridges, you're going to want to cater that jig head to how you want to get down, where you want to get down without it being blown away by the current. Now, if you're out on the humps, that's a different game. We'll talk about that another time. If you're doing grouper fishing, that's a different game as well. Sometimes you want some heavy stuff. I always start between quarter to half ounce. And if I'm hitting the flats or if I need something lighter, then three sixteenths and eighth ounce. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, a quarter ounce, I would say, is is going to be a, a good way to start. You don't want to get snagged on the bottom. If no. you feel that bottom, keep it up above that. You know, put your live bait or dead bait in the current. Um, keep your artificials in the current. Don't let them get stuck on any of the riffraff down there. Um, and then, yeah, tie the appropriate leader for it. Talk to people down here. See what is going to be the best leader for uh, what you're doing at Worldwide Sports. That's one of the great things. They can come yeah. into Worldwide, and you guys will, will give yeah. all we'll, kinds we'll, we'll of great talk info. To you. you want Yellowtail, we'll run you through that. You want Snook. Snook, for me, it's a 40-pound test. You right. know, redfish, trout, I'll go lighter on it. Um, tarpon, you can do light. You can do 30. Sometimes I'll go up to 60. Depends on the water clarity, sure. depending how they can see it. But, but get yourself a leader. Now, it, it, one way to do it, 
is going to be a swivel to the leader or go on YouTube. Look up your leader knots. Um, FG knot, Albright right. knot. Those sure. are great ones. Surgeon's knot uh, Surgeon's, is yeah, the one I mm-hmm. use. And if I'm you're using a... You know, and, and if you don't want to use braid, don't use mono. Um, right. and, and we'll spool it up for free for you over at Worldwide. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah, buy something there. That's spool awesome. Spool it up for free with mono. That, yeah, that's that is it. Sweet. Yeah, get yourself a reel there. We'll we'll do that pro bono. And um, with that, you're going out in the patch. You say, yeah, do ten pound test. You know, it's right. thick, it's strong. Mono has a lot more stretch to it than braid does. Sure. So there's going to be more give when something goes with that. And then if you want to up your game, go from that. You're going for cuda, sharks, right? Um, mackerel. You well, know, yeah. so, something toothier. You, you know, you want to put on a wire leader, and that's yep. that. And you're going to want to tie off to one end of the swivel, put your leader on the other end of that. And, and there's more subtleties to it, but that's, that's the general gist sure. of it. You know, a lot of people out there in the backcountry like something light. I use a medium light rod. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, a medium to medium heavy, you're going to be able to fight whatever comes your way. When you're out on the reefs, you, you want something lighter for the yellowtail. They're small, you know. Right. But if, if, if you're going to cast at a sailfish or something, I mean, start looking at 5,000 and up, you right. know. Um, grouper. Yeah. Heavier than that, you and know? I like for grouper, especially generally, I like to use conventionals. Yeah, and that's a lot because of people. I'm a big they, spinning guy, so yeah, but yeah so, but so am yeah, I. Yeah. And, you know, and I still thought, like everything we caught this weekend was mm-hmm. on spinners, mm-hmm. but. Um, when you're talking some of the larger fish, especially some of your larger groupers, a conventional works so much better. You have no, better absolutely. leverage, mm-hmm. and the gear ratio is better. So when you're talking about pulling up one of these son-of-a-guns that, yeah. that are giving you a heck of a fight, you want some heavy heavy ammunition. Oh, but absolutely. Like you were saying, if you're just coming down here and you want to get started and you want to just don't want to spend a lot of money, you don't like I said, get some jig heads. Yeah. Uh, you don't need weights when you're using a jig head. Yeah. Get a basic what you mentioned, a basic uh, uh, rig yeah, that you guys setup. can help them out yeah, with. Yeah, absolutely. And then find a way to get out either on a bridge, find a guy to get on a boat. Oh, yeah. And uh, you know, you can have a lot of fun and mm-hmm. bring home a lot of fish and have a lot of fun. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, and that's that. And then if you're taking your own boat out, let's say, um, Take a look at Google Maps, you know. I, I do it. Take a look at where you're going, you know. Yep. What you're going to want to look for in a lot of these places, and, and in future episodes we'll go more in-depth yep. for it, but you're going to want to look at channels between flats. You're yep. going to want to look at, if you're going mangroves, you want deep cuts underneath the mangroves yep. with a strong current. Bridges, the deep cuts through the bridges, strong current. That's Reefs, big sandy bottoms with kind of those ledges, and fish are going to be stacked up along yeah, there. Nice. So we're going to cover each one of those. Yeah, one of my favorite things yeah. to do lately, uh, especially, is I've been picking up some great, great spots just by looking at Google Earth. Once you find a spot that you see works, you can see similar types of, uh, of structure and uh, topography that you're going to know that's going to hold fish. So that's a great thing to be getting out on the water and uh-huh. going fishing. And, and I'll tell you what's another great thing, is when you have a home here, shameless plug, yeah. shameless plug, when you Run have a home it. here in the Florida Keys and and you're able to go in your backyard, you put the key in the ignition, you turn the, the, the motor on, you're in your boat, and you're out to the fishing yeah, grounds. you're gone, dude. You know, that's a, that is just so, so much fun. And I've been privileged to be able to sell waterfront properties here in South Florida for 25 years. And love being able to, as I mentioned earlier, help people turn their island dreams into their new tropical reality. And Harry's going to help me. We've got some great properties that uh, are currently available to in a, in a variety of price ranges, depending on what you're looking for. Uh, the first property we're going to talk about is is a dry lot home, meaning it's not on the water, but a phenomenal property. It is on a huge 12,000 square foot lot. This property, the sellers did a soup to nuts renovation on it. They thought they were going to be here a long time. They had to move quickly, do a job relocation. So it's going to be the new buyer's benefit. It's got brand new impact windows and doors, less than a month old, a new metal roof, uh, brand new kitchen, brand new baths, brand new floors, uh, just the soup to nuts, three bedrooms, three baths, plus a resort quality pool that has a waterfall from stone coming down and the largest, Harry, you join me out there, the largest residential tiki I've ever seen. So this is, you talk about an entertainment show place and it's on what we call Millionaire's Row. Across the street is multi-million dollar uh, Bayfront Estates. So you talk about being in a great neighborhood. This is a phenomenal property at an awesome price of $669,000. So super, super cool property. Next property I wanted to let you know about is if you've got the big boy dollars, this is the one to come see. And this is a property on Overseas Highway that we have in Key Largo. It is my Bayfront Estate. It has its own rare sandy beach. It's got a long pier with a cheeky at the end. And oh, by the way, it also has a seaplane dock. The name of the property is called Aero Largo for that reason. It's got a huge main house 
plus a separate guest house. And this property has been used for countless movies. Uh, they've done TV shoots there. They've done commercials and uh, fashion modeling shoots cool. uh, in there. And it's a super property. It is priced at $3,699,000. So big boy price. But when you look at that property on the world stage, what you'd pay for uh, Hawaii or some of the other islands, you're talking mm-hmm. double and triple the price. So great opportunity. Uh, the last one I'm going to tell you about is a super property as well. Just completed. It just got its CO. It is on... Uh, 125 Venetian Drive, mile marker 74, Lower Matacumbe, in White Marlin Beach subdivision, which is great because it also has a homeowner's park with a sandy beach. In fact, I was there yesterday in the water. Super fun, a lot of raft ops, great location. This home was, as I mentioned, just completed, just had its CO. It's got three bedrooms upstairs plus a separate entry guest quarters downstairs. It's got 70 feet of dockage, and everything is new. Again, new kitchen, impact windows, metal roof, the works in a super neighborhood. This one's priced at million one seventy five. So there's a lot of great properties on the market right now. Our market's changing, so there's some great buyer opportunities that are out there. So I invite you, if you've ever thought of having a tropical oasis of your own, give me a call, 305-439-7730, and we'll hook you up on where to go fish. Oh, yeah. uh, I even do a little thing for my clientele. I got some great GPS numbers that we'll be able to give you. <laughs> so anyway, that's going to be our show for today. I certainly appreciate you joining us uh, again uh, at Heartbreakers here in Isla Mirage. Mm -hmm. Phil, thank you so much for joining me as always. And uh, this is Michael Marinelli, and I'm wishing you tight lines and tropical vibes. Thanks for joining us on Tight Lines with Michael Marinelli and Phil Stanley. 